Good evening. Welcome back to the Space Shuttle Flight Control Room where we've got another guest commentator with us this hour. This time we're going to be talking with Michael Bourbois, who is a Shuttle Systems Instructor, correct? That's correct. Thanks so much for coming and talking with us. My pleasure. So, Shuttle Systems, that's pretty broad. Tell us, tell us what you do. Well, I'm in charge of the shuttle's electrical, environmental control, hydraulic, mechanical, thermal, caution warning systems, pretty much everything that's left after you take out the computers and the flying and the communication system, stuff, stuff like that. That's quite a long list. It is, um, and I sat down one day and figured out that out of all the switches in the entire space shuttle, about half of them are for my systems, and half of them are, for, and the other half is for everybody else put together. Wow, so, and there's not a, a small amount of switches in the space shuttle, right? No, there's probably about 1,500 to 2,000 switches and dials and meters and circuit breakers and everything. And you know what half of them do, huh? I know what half of them do, or, and I know what position they're supposed to be in at any given phase of flight. Well, how did you learn all that? Uh, lots of studying, lots of going into the simulators and uh, flipping switches and seeing what they do. Um, lots of uh, studying my cheat sheets and checklists. How many times did you crash the shuttle before you figured them all out? In the simulator, uh, of course. Not, uh, not more than I want to say. <laughs> well, that's okay. Um, so, do you have a favorite switch? A favorite switch? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I can't say that I have a particular switch. Uh, they're all my babies. They're all my favorites. Okay. Well, um, what all, what all do you have to teach the the um, the crews to do? They have to learn every switch. They all know everything. Um, in theory, they're supposed to know everything, but uh, in practice. We only try to, to get them to know the important things. Um, we teach the crews uh, what to do when the alarms go off. They have all these checklists, the flight data file, they have different procedures for lift off, then for orbit, for entry, and so we teach them the procedures and, and what to do when they notice something going wrong. How long does that take? Um, well, it takes about, uh, for the new astronaut candidates, or the ASCANs, when they come in, we put them through boot camp. And uh, that usually takes about a year, a year and a half, depending on the size of the class. Wow, that's that's a lot. I guess if you've got that many switches, though, it takes a long time to learn them all. That's true, and you, and you have to learn not only the switches, but you have to learn how to fly, and you have to learn um, the EVA tasks and the robot arm, and you have to learn everything. How long have you been training astronauts? I've been in training since uh, 1995, so this uh, just passed my 16th anniversary here in, as an instructor. So how many crews have you worked with in that time? Um, I worked with six crews in the shuttle simulator. That was STS-80, 87, 91, 101. Um, I worked with uh, Eileen Collins in the return to flight after Columbia, it's 114, and then I'm the systems instructor on 135, the last flight. Okay, so you worked with this crew. I work with this crew. Um, they're a fun bunch of people. and. Um, Bet you have some good stories. Uh, I've got one story that I can tell in public. <laughs> okay, go for it. Um, well, from time to time, Fergie, the commander, would come down and talk to our team lead and say, I wanted you to run this malfunction or this particular case for our crew. So Fergie knows what's going on, the rest of the crew doesn't. And then he'd already, he would always tell us, tell him at the end, hey, I was the one who requested that case. So towards the end of training, the rest of the crew said, you know, we want to get Fergie back. We want to run where we know what's going on. He's the only one that doesn't know. So we got our script together and we put all sorts of malfunctions that would affect only the commander. Uh, we told the crew uh, what was going to happen and when so that as soon as something happened, they were right quick on it. Oh, this is uh, this really obscure electrical bus that nobody knows or, or this uh, communications failure that nobody knows. And Fergie was really impressed that everybody knew what was going on. So we, uh, we designed the end of the run for it to be a right overhead turn coming in for the landing. So that way that Doug, the pilot, was kind of face down and could see the, the runway and see what was going on. And so we told him to say that there was a, uh, that he saw smoke coming from the Merritt Island Tracking Facility, or Mila, down at KSC. And Fergie was so amazed that, that we could do that, that we could simulate him seeing smoke, that he practically got out of his chair during the entry run and tried to see. And then everybody laughed because he, uh, because of the reaction that he had. And at that point, he knew that all these things that, that didn't add up about how smart everybody was, um, that 
yeah, okay, he knew we even had, and everybody, uh, it was a big laugh all around, and the instructors were cracking up. And so he came back down, and he was like, okay, you guys got me. They probably would have known all that anyway, right? Uh, not the obscure failures. These are ones that, that even the flight controllers would have had to scratch their heads to figure out, hmm, is this essential 1BC, uh, FP, and LC1 bus? Hmm, I don't know. Well, they seem like a pretty good-natured crew in general. They are. They're, um, they're a lot of fun. They're fun to talk to um, at work and outside of work. We, would, uh, we have occasional uh, team building where we go out for a drink somewhere and just kind of relax and, and not talk about work. And that's fun to, to sit with the astronauts. Sure. I, I guess uh, are most of the crews that you've worked with over the years pretty good? Yeah, they've all been pretty good. Um, they know that you know we're the ones training them, and and we look out for them. We're the ones who make them look good. And so uh, when they come back, they're always quick to thank us, thank the training team for making them look like everything was effortless out in space. Great. Well, I know. I guess um, in addition to that, uh, your your official work, you've also gotten kind of involved with being a um, an internet ambassador for for NASA as well. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, I am active on Twitter, and there's uh, I have a lot of friends on Twitter that I've met um, through the service, and uh, we have these things called tweet ups or Twitter meetups um, that are organized by people. Um, the ones in Florida are run by uh, Beth Beck and Stephanie Sherholz out of headquarters, and um, so they invite 150 people from around the world to come down to see a launch. Um, and then there's a lot of fun during the launch or during the, the, the countdown. Um, for 135, we they got to hear everybody from uh, Bill Gerstemeyer to Elmo from Sesame Street. And then there's uh, uh, everybody gets so um, so friendly and so attached and so tight during these these tweet ups that they have reunions and they have parties afterwards. Uh, we had uh, what we called an endless barbecue um, that went on for about close to 24 hours. Wow. Um, and uh, so there's one coming up uh, here at JSC next week on uh, the 19th. Um, 30 people from around the country and around the world are going to come down here to JSC. And I've been uh, designated as one of the so-called ambassadors to, uh, to the tweet up here. So if anybody here is listening and is coming down to the tweet up on uh, next week here, come and say hi. Great. Well, why don't you want to get involved in that stuff? Um, what started out as meeting people um, on Twitter that I had already met in real life or through, uh, um, like through internet message boards, things like that, people with um, a lot of interests in common um, or organized around a common interest and, hey, let's get together and talk and it's easy to talk to people when you have something in common. I like that. Um in the, my experience with Twitter, I like I like it because you're able to talk directly with somebody who you know really has an interest in NASA, as opposed to say um, putting out a press release or something like that where you don't really get the feedback. It's always nice hearing that people out there are, are really interested. Have you seen a lot of that? Yeah, and one of the uh, one of the things that's neat is you get to talk directly to the astronauts, um, especially the ones in space. Like all of the 135 crew is on Twitter. Some of them tweet more than others. Um, uh, Ron Guerin is on and he talks to uh, talks to people from time to time and uh, the pictures that you get um, you know they'll take a picture and then put it up on the internet for everyone to see and what's amazing to me is, is how um, how everything is now how open and um, accessible they are compared to how it was just a few years ago and I remember uh, as a kid um, watching STS-1 in front of the TV, uh, TV set and I had my camera taking pictures of the TV set and uh, you know never thinking that someday I'd be able to talk to the astronauts and go sit inside the space shuttle. Very cool. Well how did, how did you get, in, get into this job? Um, originally um, I found that uh, that I was interested in the space program. I remember the end of the moon landings. I remember Skylab, uh, Star Wars really got me interested. And uh, so I wanted to be an astronaut when I was a kid. And so I got my aerospace engineering degree at the University of Texas, um, graduated and uh, said, I want to go be an astronaut. Well, 
I got to go to JSC for that. And 23 years later, here I am still. And uh, if anybody's got a seat on a plane going up to space, let me know. So you're pretty pleased with the decision so far, huh? Um, yeah, for the most part, I'd say so. Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming and talking with us. We really appreciate it. Uh, it's my pleasure. And if we had more flights, I'd come back and talk to you again. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Thank you. And for those uh, watching at home, if you'd like to get involved with the various NASA Twitter accounts, you can go to www.nasa.gov. There will be links there to all of them. There are quite a number. Coming up next, we're going to go to the uh, spatial uh, retrospective, excuse me, and take a look back at the 30-year program of the spatial program, 30-year history of the spatial program. Well, that's coming up next on NASA TV, and this is Mission Control Houston. Hi.